so welcome to Famous When I'm Dead, where we talk to artists about how they thrive while they're still alive. I'm your yeah. host. <laughs> I'm your host, Sam King Davis, and today we're here with Ruxi and Valentin Hebrit. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah. The Romanian, yeah, we're hybrids. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, Romanian like dream candy. team is what I call you guys. I just want to let you know right up front, I didn't prepare at all for this, <laughs> um, but it's more fun that way anyway, I think. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. in life. You don't prepare for it. We you have, have no a manual. idea about what we are going to do. Baby but... steps. <laughs> so uh, why don't we just start by um, how you guys got started or like um, basically where you were in life and then how that sort of transitioned into art. Uh, like, in, two, in 2013, uh, I met Vali, <laughs> and he was on his own, like uh, an independent artist uh -huh. uh, with uh, 20 years of uh, practice. But oh. he had like issues with, uh, you know, customers and marketing and everything. Like he didn't like customers. <laughs> oh, so you're so, the you're the guru, so right? So he met you're... me. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Oh, okay. And uh, then in, um, I started going with him at uh, events, you know, private events. And uh, I, I, feel, I fell in love with his art, uh, first of all, <laughs> and then <laughs> with him. And uh, I, I really liked what he, was, what he was doing and I saw the potential in marketing, you know, for him. And uh, so in 2016, uh, we started a business, like so, an agency here in Bucharest, in Romania. So were you drawing caricatures or are you, are you no. doing art? You're just, I'm the, just the spokesperson, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, I have a multiple job description, you know, yeah. I do a lot of tasks. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. <laughs> okay. So I want to ask you, Valentin, um, what was like what were you doing before you started drawing? I mean, most artists are drawing when they're a kid and all that, but before you became a professional artist, what was your life like? No, I, I started pretty early. Uh, when I was in eighth grade, uh, my mom, who is a painter, who, she, she took me to the art high school. And then, uh, I mean, like, uh, I don't know how they call the grade school, grade, before, before the high school, it's called what? Uh, yeah. Junior, grade school junior high or something yeah yeah <laughs> junior high yeah uh, juvenile, <laughs> juvenile. <laughs> and, 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 and then uh, junior, yeah. and then uh, i continued art high school art college and then i became an art teacher uh, but uh, between these things uh, right after high school i met this guy in romania who is pretty famous uh, on in the territory of this country uh, stefan popa popas who well apparently he beat a record uh, speed Speed drawing, yeah, speed drawing. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but this guy, uh, he 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 is pretty intense in uh, having uh, live gigs. Uh, he was invited in well, good situations, politicians, actors, and uh, yeah, discreet locations. And I had the opportunity to meet with people that I I could never at that age, right? Uh, and when you start immediately after high school making some money doing live gigs, you kind of bond to the thing, right? Yeah, uh, I, I I tried a few times. I really tried to get away from it. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, it's the fact that I, uh, as Ruxi said, I had a, I have a real difficulty uh, trying to put out, put on the mask and uh, doing the live live gigs thing. Yeah, uh, I, I I really prefer working from photos. Uh, but I've learned. Uh, 
so many years I've learned to, to put on the mask and, and do it right and the people saying nice things about the experience because after all the idea of creating a moment for a person who's posing is actually our our thing yeah. and when Ruxi came to the business with the idea of a business uh, the show uh, went into a nice place where uh, we created repeating customers uh, people uh -huh. who came because they liked what they uh, received the first time and wanted to do it uh, for somebody else and or they recommended us and that's one way to actually grow is to do a nice job but more than a nice job it's uh, go above and beyond because uh, <laughs> Ruxi also brought something that I didn't do <laughs> I, I used to work immediately after I started working digitally I sent a dig uh, digital file to people and they were supposed to go and print themselves their, their, ah. their work. But when Ruxi came, she said, no, I'm going to I'm going to do full service. I'm going to print it nicely. She bought nice printers so they could get photo quality that we couldn't find in Bucharest. And that's one thing to to be able to invest whatever you have or whatever you don't have to be able to buy good printers and then give, give them the best you, you can give them and then uh, even put on a bow and a nice uh, cellophane wrap and uh, uh, <laughs> gift uh, yeah it's, they would when when she came everything was ready to be gifted you know so when you give you go that well that one step beyond uh, or above the the, the, the the natural process that i used to work with uh, in yeah that made it like an experience and people just came back and recommended us you know so so you were like the angry really like... the angry caricature artist before Ruxi came oh yeah <laughs> yeah no no I, I still am I still am this is another function that she has to keep me uh, to keep the leash short you know because I, 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 I want to bite some some people who who don't have the right comment you know when they come and pick up their their piece from me but uh, yeah I've learned I've learned why I shouldn't be angry but uh, the practice of not doing it <laughs> obviously it will come again with some more years, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, I need her for that because uh, so me, you I don't had the motivation or the skills. <laughs> I'm actually I can relate to that. My wife actually like any time I send a message, especially if someone pisses me off, I'll I'll type up an email, and I'll say yeah. Kate, come yeah. here and read read this, and I'll <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Or hey, please respond to this because <laughs> I'm. I'm a hothead right now. Like uh, yeah, it's really important. Really important. Uh, I always recommend when you start, uh, when you want to make a living doing art, have somebody else doing the the buffer zone thing for the you. Marketing. Because uh, when you're selling yourself, even though you think you can, you're the best at representing yourself, right? You understand the level of, uh, that you're working at. You understand the field. You, you know how many artists re um, uh, appreciate you or the awards you have. But it looks bad. So I mean, it looks better to have to have yourself being represented by a company or a person, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing. And another thing is, uh, if you have an empath, uh, and Shirusi is taking care of the conversations with great care, but not a lot of, I mean, not a, not a, no, not at all fake, being fake. She takes care of them. She takes care of me. So she's a great buffer zone, and they they feel like it's, you know, it's not a conflict that. I, it turned into a conflict in some situation when they directly spoke to me, you know. So uh, you don't want that, you know. You don't want. Yeah, that. she's like an animal tamer. <laughs> yeah. Animals. <laughs> there are a few beasts inside. <laughs> so you had you had um, uh, like a couple of calls to action. Like you had a call from the artist that you met, like the the famous artist that you met. But then it sounds like that kind of like you you were introduced almost in that way but then Ruxi came along and sort of became the guide on how to clean everything yeah. up and well yeah he uh, refused the call yeah. Yeah. people say uh, great trees or tall trees don't go uh, don't grow at the shade of the taller trees or something like that uh, this guy was, uh, as many artists are, uh, was interested not only in pr producing himself and promoting himself, right? I, I was pretty good at making some money, but uh, the idea of creating or bringing, uh, building a career doesn't come like that, you know? So uh, when a, an interested person in your name or promoting your name comes along, uh, you feel the difference, right? So uh, that guy showed me that you can make a living doing this. Uh, you can get to high circles doing this. Uh, you can walk about and walk around doing this, so all good things, but uh, the idea of you being a person that at some point uh, creating a, uh, 
how do you say quote not quota uh, quota uh, uh, level of famousness <laughs> that yeah reputation be, reputation reputation in building a reputation you, you can't do that next to an artist who's uh, who's pretty famous himself right so yeah so uh, i needed this you know to this situation this type of situation how long have you guys been i mean when did you meet how many years ago it's Ruxi said 2000. Popas? No, no. Uh, Popas or Ruxi? Oh, Ruxi. Oh, uh, seven years ago. Yeah. Seven years ago. The, luck, the lucky number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of uh, have you had any? I mean, most people have some challenges, but what kind of like what are some of the biggest obstacles that were put in your way? Uh, in our relationship. Oh, uh, well, I mean, if you want to talk about that, you can, <laughs> but I mean more, yeah. <laughs> the personal one, the business yeah. one. <laughs> they do mix quite Yeah, quite they do lot, mix, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, when I first met him, now he's tamed. <laughs> then, <laughs> back then, he was uh, really low, you know, in, in uh, self-esteem and he was defensive all the time, so... Uh, even though I was trying to get commissions for for him, you know, he's like, no, I'm not making any changes. I'm <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm not uh, drawing the bodies or whatever. Uh -huh. He was all the time uh, uh, opposing. My, uh, my zone, my, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was safe in zone. yeah. He was yeah. protecting his safe zone, and even now, even now, he still does that uh -huh. when he's overwhelmed by something or you know he. We all have this mindset, and it's very sensitive <laughs> for everybody. And uh, we all, all of us, have our own hero's journey, you know. And when we cross <laughs> our yeah. journeys, uh, we have to, you know, harmonize. And this means letting go of our uh, fears and stop projecting our frustrations on the other. So at first, we we had this. Because I was uh, working in a corporation, I had many jobs before starting uh, an agency with Bali. Uh, I was always in conflict with uh, my boss. This is, this is boss. one of the, big, the, the biggest challenges. The her mentality of being able to work in a company and working yeah. uh, 10 hours a day, 8 hours a day, doesn't apply to us, as you probably know. So uh, yeah. when you mix these two mentalities or these two trainings, yeah. it, it, you're going to get some conflict. Because right now, I'm doing something that I've ne never done before in my life. I'm 40. Yeah, he, he's working every day. Every day, every day. <laughs> I'm like, shuffling. Wow. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's new and it's... And for us, for, you know, the ones the ones who are working in uh, used to work in corporations we were like but artists have a great life they just draw you know they draw what yeah what is the best uh, uh job you can have you know drawing i'm working with numbers and whatever excels yeah. and and you are doing such a nice and inspiring job what can you not like about it so we yeah were, uh, projecting on ourselves, you know, uh, why don't you feel like drawing? Because you should feel like drawing all the time. Because <laughs> yeah, this is a blessing. Yeah. This is not uh, yeah. a curse, you know. And he was like, uh, stop being corporate here. <laughs> I'm not drawing today. I don't feel like it. <laughs> that, well, actually, so, that's, um, that's something that I go through. Um, and I set a rule for myself on that because there's definitely days where I'm just, I'm not feeling it. You know, I'm like, ah, I'm yeah. not, I don't want to, like you said, I don't want to put that face on. I don't want to smile at yeah, people all yeah. day, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, when but, we were working at Live Gigs, uh, people were receiving this as a gift from the groom and bride and groom, right? Uh, and uh, this is uh, people who are not paying, who are not demanding right yeah. but uh, in this situation when you're retailing stuff which uh, yeah, has, again has never it's a completely different situation a different yeah, right retail. Now. we didn't have the retail part yeah, yeah. Uh, are you at a retail location right now yeah uh, yeah this is this we is are what, at the seaside <laughs> oh okay seaside, I, I saw yeah. you like waving somebody yeah. away 
Yeah, yeah it was a child who was trying yeah. to get one. Sorry, but you're done. And we are like, no, 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 no not no. now, baby. We have uh, an evening. <laughs> to, today schedule. we're not drawing, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so it's our first uh, it's an experiment this year for us you know working in a hotel with a caricature studio and uh, we are printing here and we are taking commissions during the night i make photos and then Bali works the, the next day and we we just deliver in the evening and so on we have uh -huh. we this is like been taking part for one month and then we have one month and he's huh. so tired, he's drawing like 30 drawings per day, yeah. imagine, <laughs> sketches. I, like, I, I but... could draw more, but right now, because I'm working from photos, uh, I took the advantage to draw a little bit more for each person, right? Uh, but those 30 drawings are really drawing uh, the, yeah. the breath out of me, you know how it is. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, we and have 30, examples here. 30, 30 each day, <laughs> it's, I mean... I could. Uh, I always did at live gigs. I did. I've done 90 or 100 or 70 for for a live gig uh, using markers. But, but that's with just digital one gig. Because you're switching between buttons yeah. and uh, swatches and stuff like that. It takes longer. Uh, I have. Uh, I want to do the shading. I want to do it more for each piece, uh, and that's uh, draining me. Really draining me. Yeah. And if you uh, in the morning, I'm I'm uh, waking up thinking, okay, so what I'm what am I doing He's right stressed. now? Yeah. I, I'm you have really too many orders stressed. to get done. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, but we can stop whenever we want. Like, but you know, you know have, what the the solution to that is, right? Uh, charge more. Oh, no, charge no, no, no. Uh, yeah, we have a situation where he, uh, here that we, we discussed we, we discussed with the, the discussed, we discussed, discussed with the discussed. hotel owner. <laughs> uh, we arranged that we are gonna draw the guests for free. Uh, which is not the best thing in the world, and we're just gonna charge extra for some print for, for the printing and the, yeah. the framing, you know. Yeah, we're printing on canvas, on paper. Uh, we wanted we wanted to test because Romania, this is quite new. This is actually quite very new. We're uh, opening this thing, the drawing at the hotel. Uh, I, you've seen people drawing on the beach. We've you've seen people drawing in, in the street. We we wanted to move it uh, inside the hotel, so it's m uh, more than just smoking a cigarette and then yeah. drawing something in the street. You it, can draw. We, we yeah. wanted to we want to create. When the money will come more and more, we'll want to create a studio. It's going to be in the middle of the luxury situation because this is a five-star hotel. So we want to uh, change mentality. We want to do yeah. more than just draw and make the money. And we're uh, right now, Rooksy uh, built, uh, built a uh, an Excel doc document where we're saving how many people were were drawn on Tuesday, yeah. on Friday. We want to see the patterns. We want to see the attitude. We want to yeah. see how much money because we raised the the, the 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 prices a little bit, and we're going to grow a little bit higher and we want to see where we can, can stop so all of this is going to be franchised at some point we want to uh, create this safe haven for more artists because this guy who we're working with he has more hotels and he, he has for uh, more artists but we're not going to be able to promise nothing for them you know because we want to see the patterns we want to see the traffic we want to see the attitude we want to change the attitude because we still have this uh, okay uh, draw me right now you know i'm gonna give you a piece of paper can you do me now now because it's like three minutes right or we want to change that to the uh, studio attitude where you want to sit with us we're gonna get to know each other or some some more things yeah. than the usual uh, caricature stand that you that's a really see, right? yeah, we are, really interesting we are idea defining our allies our enemies our <laughs> and we are approaching to the dragons then we're like in the middle of the of this pandemic situation is very hard for everybody for the hotels they don't have budget oh ah, yeah that's that, that's marketing that's how they received us we don't yeah. have the budget for entertainment so yeah. we wanted to get in no matter what yeah uh, this is how we proposed the idea of drawing for free and getting the the the, the food for free here we so have all inclusive the, oh all nice treatment so yeah. this is good uh we still they give pay you for a rent the in the house next to you get like the jacuzzi we room? should have one <laughs> but uh uh, I don't know why they reserved all the rooms and apartments for guests. You know, they were <laughs> hoping that they would have a cool uh, occupation, mm -hmm. ac accommodation, Occu oh, occupation. Yeah. Occupation. occupation, occupation, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. still, yeah. they don't, they don't. But they reserved all the rooms, so yeah. they they didn't give Dave us, but gave that. But still, good, good. It's but we yeah, but they give you. Now. Yeah, that's good. You got uh, the hook I don't up. have to worry about dishes and uh, you know yeah. washing. And Are you 
Rooksy, are you collecting email addresses? Yeah, of your yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. too. Yeah. We want to be careful yeah. how we promote the, the I mean, how we use those emails because you don't want to get into a spam situation. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but I'm thinking of an email campaign. Although that the data is going to be useful because uh, actually we thought that uh, being a luxury location, a lot of people have money here. So if they uh, if they like us, they'll keep us in mind for uh, Christmas time or uh, future uh, commission. Future commission. So this is not not at all uh, the the nice. story, you know, because we're hoping they have uh, baptism and weddings and stuff like that that they can invite yeah. us to. If they like the experience, and this is why we're doing it the best we can do it. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if we don't make a lot right now. Yeah. In this, we, in will, this moment, we will you know? not get rich. We're getting <laughs> data. Year, we're but... getting to meet a lot of people. So we don't just sit home, at home and uh, wait for people to and knock on their hour door. Watch you know? Netflix. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've done that. <laughs> that. That's cool. That's a really good idea you guys got going there. I never thought of it like that, you know, going in and doing it for free and then just charging for the printing and then, you know, establishing yeah. a big customer base like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're happy to give us the data. It's it's incredible. The phone I, numbers. I and, just feel you know. a bit bad because I I have to you know work <laughs> Bali and uh, I feel like a slave. Uh, slave yeah, driver. Uh, if, yeah, yeah, this is what you were asking. Uh, the the great one of the great challenges is uh, uniting our minds into this because uh, the the. Um, how they say the framework for this situation is that we should we should be happy we should be happy that in this pandemic we found a, a, a nice uh, contract right mm -hmm. but, uh, so it doesn't matter if the situation tells you that you should be happy when you're tired uh, you can't be really happy you know mm -hmm. so we have to keep communicating and this is a great aspect that Ruxi does best we communicate so uh, we talk the day the hard days through you know or we pull each other when somebody one of us is down and yeah. When you're two, it's it's best. It's best, you know. When you're when you have you have two people in the situation, because if you're alone, when you're tired, you just they stop, yeah. or you you get uh, an argument with the customer, and then you get pulled uh, pushed out of the hotel, or you know. So it's best to have two, and one of us is a calmer person. So. Uh, and the situation is really uh, strange because uh, I have a girl. She's 11. My daughter spent all summer with my parents. And they were like uh, isolating themselves from us because we are more exposed, you to know, the public, to, the, yeah. to the virus and everything. Mm, and yeah. we were like all alone, <laughs> isolated at, at the seaside. And even though, you know, it's, it's a great adventure for us as uh, we are together in this and he's not alone, I'm not alone. It's a great feeling, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it has affected our lifestyle, you know, being separated from our families and from our friends and everything. We were like, oh, you're at the seaside. It's like, you already have the virus. <laughs> you're infected. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, so they see us. Yeah, yeah. We protect ourselves. No, 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 no. I've heard that the TV. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, you know, people are not seaside, taking care. Yeah, yeah, at the seaside. Nobody's careful at the so, seaside. But this is everything, you know, the mental... Uh, Team that we choose, and you know, I've talked about this at Eurocouture uh, last year, and it's so important now, you know, to feel like you're, I'm the explorer in everything, and uh, I choose to manifest myself in a certain way. But I'm, if I identify myself with the artist now, in these times, I should be like, oh, I'm an artist. I'm affected by the pandemic, pandem pandemic, and. Uh, what am I going to do? And you were like stressed. But if you think like an explorer, you're like more, uh, what's the environment where I can find a solution? Uh -huh. um, it's it's easier to to see the next step, even though you can't see very far, you know, because I'm I don't know what am I going to do after one month or what am I going to do next. Year, I don't know anything now. <laughs> but we're ready yeah. to, Uncertainties. to explore, we're ready to observe, but to see the patterns. You're the explorer, you're like, I don't know. Mm. Today I'm fine, I'm doing the best I can. I don't know, maybe tomorrow uh, I will receive yeah. a help, some help or something. I don't know, but yeah. I'm my, my mindset is to adjust and uh, exploit the artist. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually, I've heard, and um, make them draw, <laughs> force them to draw with a whip. Yeah. I've, 
I've actually heard uh, a good analogy about just driving down a dark road and you can only see as far as your headlights go. Yeah. So I, I like you that. You adjust to the obstacles. Yeah. 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 So I like that. Think like an explorer because, you know, we, we have to, we can only see so far down the road and we have to make a swerve here and there. I want to go back uh, just a yeah. minute to the, um, the emotion thing because yeah. um, personally, um, I think that one of the things that, is a big advantage for me is uh, I grew up with a really strong work ethic. Um, so I was, I was raised by a single mom and she really had to work her ass off to like pay for everything. Um, so she taught me how to work hard, like even if I didn't want to. And um, this is a big advantage for me over here in Europe as well, because as you know, the European lifestyle is not even, you know, all, all, the first thing is I'm American, so we already have like a like a kind of a workaholic kind of mindset. And then on top of that, I was raised by a single mom, so I was like kind of given more work ethic. So when I moved to Europe, it was like, oh yeah, I'm working 40 or 50 hours a week, you know, okay, but everyone else is working 25 hours a week. So I guess my point is, is um, when I feel like I don't, I have a rule for myself, which is like when I don't feel like drawing, if it's a drawing day, uh, I just do it anyway. Like, and, and sometimes I'll trick myself into it. I'll just say, okay, well, I'm just going to go to the location. I'll have yeah. a coffee like outside the location. We'll just yeah, see how exactly. I feel. Yeah. And then when I get there, it's like, all right, well, I got my pad and someone's asking for a drawing. So I'll do this first one and then I can yeah. go home after that. And then, and then the energy starts happening between yeah. the customer exactly. and you. And it's like, it's like, all right, cool. What happened last night? Yeah. 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 yeah? Yeah. Of it's course, like, okay. of course. Because I, I, uh, I, after driving all around the whole day, because we're going to get our prints, we met with the family, and we, we've been drawing in the morning and all those things. And then in the evening, we have to come here and uh, put on a smile, right, and put on the mask. Uh, and she uh, was the same. Like I, I will I, grab a coffee, and you, I will stop arguing beside, with my beside, mind. Besides, besides the coffee, I was, <laughs> uh, I was calm because I knew the experience will kick in. Because this is what it does, right? Yeah. When yeah. you don't have the uh, well, and, and this style that I'm working with doesn't require too much attention because you've seen I'm almost almost copying the person. I'm not I interpreting too much. So the inspiration doesn't have to be there because I don't require it here in this situation. Because the interpretation, deformations, they ask for inspiration and that doesn't yeah. come easily, so, right? So I created this style that allows me almost to look at the photo and then the, uh, the reflex of, of uh, working for many years is going to kick in. And after two pieces that are done, and then I, I entered the situation yeah. that you just mentioned where uh, the hand just goes by itself, and uh, I, I rely on that, right? But uh, besides that, I, I was angry because I knew that in the morning I'll wake up with my heart pumping because this is what I, I, I'm, I'm stressed. I don't know. I've never been in a situation, so I don't know how to, yeah. to manage it right, properly. Mm -hmm. uh, we discuss a lot, a lot and we argue a lot uh, in, in private, sometimes <laughs> in public. But uh, it's because uh, it's sometimes new. It's, it, it's, well, it's, it's new and, it, and, and it's new and challenging. And we, we're we going to add this to the franchise idea. We're going to add that you're going to be stressed after 10 days because I don't know how many people are drawing each day 30 or 40 uh, pieces. If you're drawing traditionally, you're going to draw more sometimes, right? But 30, it's a good number to get you squeezed, right? Yeah. Uh, and if you do it daily, you, you're going to get there, <laughs> down down there where I've never been, I, I, I think, you know? Yeah, but it's, it's also important, you know, to, to have one day or two per week when you can... You know, indulge yourself with uh, something well, that you like, and this come uh, naturally here because yeah. on Sunday we don't have too many orders, so it's we gonna don't come have naturally. Orders, you know, too we, much in the yeah, weekend yeah. because uh, we can print on canvas during week weekends. We don't have a plotter with us, and uh, so we are, you know, a bit uh, free to enjoy a coffee or a lunch or something. But and that's we actually need, we need these breaks for the mind. <laughs> that's actually a good point because. The thing is, is like for here in Prague, the Charles Bridge, I don't know if you know the famous yeah, Charles Bridge. Yeah. So that opened um, and they, because of coronavirus, they were only open so many days. Like artists were only allowed to work so many days. Well, the last time I went and paid rent, they said, well, you can work all the days now. And you can actually work from like nine in the morning till 10 at night. Wow. So, um, you know, the thing for me is like, 
I'm going to continue to take the two days off in the middle of the week, partially because I have the podcast and I want to, you know, make sure that I do a quality job with that. But also, um, even if I didn't, I would still take a, at least one or two of those days off because, and also I, I start at one o'clock and I work until 10. Um, wow. and there's a morning, there's like some people who do like a morning shift and I, I do like the later one. Um, and for me, it's really important because I could go and work probably 10 hours a day. I do eight hours a day now. I could probably work 10 or 11 hours a day, but I might do the same amount of drawings in that time just because I'm so tired, like that, that yeah. energy. So when I go there, like I'm rested, I'm fed, I'm like stretched out and I'm like, I got my clean clothes on and I go, I'm hydrated and I'm just like yeah. in a good mood. And obviously that, that vibe kind of like yeah, draws people in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. The vibe actually yeah. attracts or repels people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh I, we've seen it. I wanted to also talk about I wanted to add something to what you said about um like having two people, um like having an artist or an agent or someone who's helping you or whatever. Um I've noticed in the caricature community that there's people that own uh art businesses or that do like booking agencies or whatever. And I was going to get into that earlier, like three years earlier, but I wanted more time to develop my style and, and like increase my skills. And I still want to do that. That's still my primary focus. But what I notice is, is that the people who get into that, the thing about like being an artist is like, you really need someone to do that for you, or you need to like, um, not spend too much time doing that or figure out a way to do that really efficiently because as an artist, you know, it, as you guys know, it takes a lot of time to develop like skills. So you have to practice and, and put a lot of uh, work into yourself. And I noticed that with the people who got too much into the business side of it, who started off as artists, their style is kind of, I don't want to sound insensitive, but it's mediocre. You know, there's nothing that really stands out to it. And the people who are like winning the awards and who are like, doing these kind of like amazing things are the people who are really focusing and spending a lot of time on their art. So as an artist, like that's a struggle that I have, like I'm, I'm finding because I want, that's all I want to do. I just want to like learn how to be a better artist, you know, but I have yeah. to do the business side of it too, yeah. you know? Yeah. Not being a better businessman, a better artist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm telling you, man, there are so many things that I don't want to do. So many things that I don't want to do when it comes to living on this planet. <laughs> I don't want to do the accounting process, talking to the accountant. I don't want to do talk to the guy who's doing the website. I don't want to do the Excel documents to, to create the patterns that's going to help me in the business later. I cannot build a realistic business with the amount of money or the resources that I have. I want a dreamy business. I'm going to talk to you about that maybe some other time. Uh, but when, when Ruxi came, she came with a realistic plan with the money that we have and invested it all to the last cent. And then it, 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 it came back. But you have to, to have that mind. Because if you're dreaming too much, you, you're risking not doing it at all, you know? Yeah. So if you're building a realistic plan, if you're holding tight, because there are times when it doesn't work, as, you know, it's, it's it's about seasons. Uh, being able to put aside for the winter time, right? Yeah. I cannot do that. Baruxi did that. Many artists cannot save the money, but an economical mind can do that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of resisting on the market for three, four, five years when it's not working high, but dreaming that's going to be, I mean, being confident and give it, giving the other person the, the energy that you have and uh, believing that it's going to work. Uh, it's, it's a skill to be able to encourage the artist who's sometimes tends to be dramatic and thinking that it's not going to work, right? And if yeah. you have that person, this is all good. If you have a person who doesn't want to steal from you, if it's a friend or a family member, or in my case, the, the lover, <laughs> uh, she's going to work for me and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel that. So if, you, if you're feeling that the agency where the agent is working with you for you and it's not uh, going to rub you uh, blind, it's all uh, it's all good energy. And if you're feeling that uh, like she's taking care of the customers, but also protecting your feelings because it's not going to come with the message from the customer as it as it were you know you know you're going to change this you're going to change that with that person because they're going to refuse the painting no she's going to try to explain it with uh, to them with uh, 
the reference photos that we used. It's going to talk to them a little bit and then come to me with a filtered message. And all those things are, uh, they don't feel like much, but they are much because a, 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 the customer doesn't always come with a good attitude to uh, get a refund or to get a mod uh, modify, uh, modification done, you know? So if you have that buffer and that person next to you, mm, it's all and good. I'm not even trying to make a business. I'm just trying to, yeah. you know, make a living, to <laughs> have a decent life. I'm not dreaming of, I don't know what, houses and cars and everything. I'm just, yeah. we are together in this journey. And, another, uh, another thing and he was talking about the franchise part. We call it franchise, but we don't really know. Uh, I didn't go through with all the details that implies, but the word franchise in our minds means this is a model. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, Vali always said, you know, help other artists and, you know, for me to book um, artists for events. And I was like, no, I want to uh, teach them how to fish. I don't want to give them the fish because artists want to be independent and they don't want someone to tell them what to do and uh, put a schedule and everything. I just want to uh, uh, tell them that th this is a model. We have... It works. It works. We have tried And this is how we, we and fail. If this you is where wish, we fail. And, and if you wish to, yeah. to do the same in Prague, in Vienna, in Brussels or whatever, you can use this model from now on because it works, you know, have the prints, the everything. We, mm -hmm. What we have, the know-how of our experience, not big, the business part. I, I really don't like the, the, the word because I feel like a businesswoman and I don't want to be a businesswoman. I want to be, um, let's say, someone who supports artists and I'm a fan of art. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to pull an all the money and yeah, an advocate. You know, I'm. Yeah. I really love. Yeah, that's another great uh, thing. Caricature festivals and when we meet at Eurocouture and ISCA and I, I really love this field and the uh, caricature artists are so funny and so alive and so honest. You know, and I. Yeah. I, I couldn't generalize like not all of them. <laughs> No, but most of the caricature artists have a great sense of humor and I enjoy uh, the company of artists. And even though sometimes, you know, people promote us like we are the caricature artists, but I'm, I don't draw, but they see us like we are one, like we are both in this, but I don't know, I just, I just talk, <laughs> I, I don't draw yet, you know. You're the voice. I don't, ha yeah, I'm the voice, but we, we do have a, a nice mix. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. we complete our, you know, we complete each other. And that's, uh, I, I don't think this is the best for an artist. Maybe some artists can find all these resources within and marketing and art and inspiration. And oh, there's no time. But, there's just no yeah. time. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, what I wanted to underline is that uh, when I did it at weddings or events by myself, it was uh, I, I was trying to be professional. I was trying to do the best interpretations, yeah. but it was just caricatures, and you get easily forget uh, for, forgotten uh, just by doing a professional work with caricature. But when it's uh, Ruxi smiling at them, uh, and uh, when it's Ruxi uh, uh, taking care of a bride to get the best gift, uh, and she's talking with them all the time. It's an experience. Yeah. I mean, caricature can be an experience, but a character artist doesn't always put on a good mask to create the experience. Because sometimes we're cold, sometimes we're distant or in, in, uh, introverts, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the time we're introverts, even though at caricatures, uh, uh, festivals, festivals or uh, conventions, we, we shine a little bit uh, more because, yeah, it's your place where you can open up. But uh, in life situation, especially in uh, retail situations, you close, you're, you're closed a little bit. So, yeah. uh, but when Rooksy is around, the, the place is more alive and the, the whole thing is, a, it's an experience. And yeah, actually. More and more about how to make it a, a, a vivid, a real, or an interesting experience, positive experience. Uh, we're going to share that knowledge, how, how you can dress, how you can you behave, how to control your nerves. That's, I don't know if it's going to turn into a manual or uh, classes or whatever, but a at guideline. some point, at some point, I'm pretty sure this is going to turn into data that can be shared, right? Yeah. Uh, 
because some only want the knowledge when it's going to be good. Some want to be the, uh, protected by Ruxi, and that's going to be good also if we manage to create a, a bigger company. Because this was actually, uh, I'm going to share this, but uh, just a, a tad. Uh, we, we went to a TV show where they proposed uh, a, like a Shark Tank kind of show. Okay. And we received it is verbally, tank, we received the money, uh, but we didn't actually sell the money. But yeah, due, because to, of the to, pandemic. pandemic, they, they uh, retreated. Congratulations. Know, the, the team. We had the project and... Yeah. But the project was to create a bigger company with uh, tools to print the professional and, tra and trainings and spaces where you can, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, qu living quarters where you can stay while you're in the city and doing a gig, but you live somewhere else. And all those uh, uh, be, being picked retail, up by their... Uh, yeah. Retail from the, caricature and... Uh, live gigs. Live yeah. Gigs being picked up from the airport and having a, a graphic tablets if you don't have one or those things could be uh, yeah. uh, covered by an investment not by us as we are as we are we can support ourselves now we're experiencing and experimenting with the hotel uh, uh, caricature studio and then we kind of share this but uh, after we share this we actually want to be able to provide uh, uh, support in in materials if uh, material support at some point but yeah. we want to see how it turns out because right now it's just a surviving game. <laughs> We're playing it quite right. And I, I kind of dig this uh, drawing by the seaside uh, thing in this tent. But it's what's really working. It's elegant. It's uh, peaceful. It's just my mind that is playing tricks on me you now that I'm working too much just because yeah. I, I just met my comfort zone. But yeah. if you're going uh, beyond your comfort zone, that's life, you know, you know, one that's step where, further, one step further. Right? That's where all growth happens is outside no? the comfort uh -huh. zone. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk to what you said about memory or what you talked, uh, what you said about, um, having an experience because, um, I'm reading a book now it's called building your story brand. I don't know if you've heard of this book. It's really good. But, um, so I was thinking of something I could put on my booth on the bridge and I decided that I would put, uh, make memories so uh, it says caricatures and then afterward it says make memories yeah. because that's really what people are looking for i mean of course they want an interesting piece of artwork or something funny to laugh at or whatever but but people remember that and they hang that up in their house you know and thank you we've heard it a, a, a few times make memory they made memories with us they, they yeah. said this no, is this nice is memory. more that we could yeah. find here a lot more that we could find here with the photos and and the, the, this uh, b b baked uh, corn and stuff like that. Yeah. When we came to you, we received some something that we're gonna remember more. So make memories is gonna work just fine. So I wanted to also um, there's like a couple of things that you guys said that I want to talk about. Um, there you you said that art uh, caricature artists are like honest and and fun and li yeah. alive people. And I had this great experience yesterday, actually. This guy, there was a group of Germans, and this guy had this skin condition. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like part of your, your face can get red, and it actually can make your, like, lips swell up a lot. So, you know, he had these, like, kind of facial deformities from this, whatever this skin disease is, and his lip, his bottom lip was really big. And uh, the side of his face was kind of like, it had, like, a rough texture, and, like, it was really red. And um, he sat for a caricature. So I was, I, uh, and okay. so he sat, he sat down and I said, you know, uh, just so you know, like, um, I don't take it easy on anybody, you know, like you get the same treatment everybody gets, you know, and he said, go for it. So I went ahead and drew him, you know, and I, you know, I drew him just like I saw him and exaggerated even more and like made the, the texture even more and he loved it, you know, so like this was. This is a cool thing about, uh, I, I don't know, I just wanted to share that because I thought yeah. that that was a really, like, it was my favorite drawing yesterday, even though it may have not have been, like, the colored but one. But it was the story behind it as well, you know, yeah. the conversation you had with the yeah. guy. The idea that you can create a culture where people will accept uh, exaggerated caricatures, uh, not not me. I'm not going to be the guy who's going to be the, uh, uh, how do they say, bringing the caricature culture in Romania because I'm doing these mild caricatures. Uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure that at some point I have a feeling that we're going to be helping those artists who are ready to interpret, who see the interpretation uh, as, 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 um, as far as it can get uh, in terms of uh, 
not only stylization, but uh, exaggeration and courage and the, the fun in it. And we're going to protect those guys, you know, if when we meet, meet, when we'll meet them. But at this point, yeah, as I said, it's just a surviving game. But we'll keep our eyes peeled for that, those situations because you also have to create a culture where people and understand caricature for what it is, not just uh, cute portraits. Because right now I'm just doing this. I'm getting a lot of likes and I'm getting a nice set of comments. But that's my fear of being rejected. But if somebody is going to come and it is, it, it, he or she sees shapes nicely and interpret it, they're going to be opening up the culture in Romania. And we're going to protect those, you know, because uh, seeing interpretation and keeping the personality, you know how that it's a nice game and you have to protect it when you, when you see it, right? Yeah, being yeah. honest with yourself. Yeah. You saw that, you draw that, you know, so... Yeah. But uh, if they, if, the, if somebody is gonna refuse you once, or you have a hundred refusals, you're gonna tame, you're gonna uh, go back a little bit with your interpretation. But that's bad because character yeah. is not about going back, you know, from what you saw and you know going as far as you can get and still keeping that person. Oh, that's a nice uh, game, you know. So I want to. Uh, I have a, actually a question, and I have some uh, artwork for you guys to look at. This one, I'm going to send it to you. Can I send it to your Instagram, Ruxi? Yeah. Instagram. Okay, hold, hold on. Messenger? Facebook? No, Instagram. Okay, Instagram. I can do it with Messenger, too. Messenger. Oh. oh, you know what? He sent it to me with an email. So I'll just forward the email to you. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, the email goes through. We're going to hear some audio questions or something. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to say, oh, do you have your own questions? No. Oh, no, I'll, I will play a, a, a message from him. But right now, let me send it. Oh, hold on one sec. Okay. So what email should I send it to? Oh, no, office. 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 office um, Caricatures. Caricatures. Yeah. Office at where? Uh, caricatures.com. Caricatures, like tourism. Tours. Caricatures. So C A R I C A T O U R S. Yeah, T O. T O U. Caricatures. And that's dot com or com. at Gmail? Yeah, dot com. Okay. Dot com. Uh, no, because uh, in Romania, is, we have to explain it. In English, we have to explain it. I don't know. Maybe in France, <laughs> we'll be able to say caricature. Yeah, we they don't have, have a city any... called Tour. <laughs> yeah, I love the, there I love the different ways that people uh, pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, play with caricature. <laughs> I like the Italian way the best. They go, ah, caricatura. Uh, yeah. It's close to Romania. Maybe they were Romanians and you thought they were Italians. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, yeah. Romanian is a is a crazy language. It sounds like such a mix of so many different languages. Okay, so it, okay, so I'm gonna play the. I'm gonna try to play it through this mic. Mm -hmm. uh, he sent me. So let me know if you can hear it. Oh, wait a second. Uh, super honored to be here. Just put the ear, ear, no, no, the other, the other hole on top of the phone. Hi. Uh, well, you hear uh, that one. Yeah. Honored to be able to ask uh, Valentine questions. Can you hear it? I'm really happy that, that Sam yeah. has this thing up. I'm a big fan of Valentine. So uh, my, my question um, is, um, I, I I guess it's about process. I, what I really like about your work is how your process starts off very loose and you work pretty fast. I, I was able to watch you work a little bit during the Eurocature and um, I also watch a lot of your process videos. I love those videos. And the thing that I notice a lot is um, your work starts off very loose and uh, you don't you don't give yourself uh, too much to work with almost. You're not defining exactly where the lights are and where the shadows are. 
but you're able to literally in the last minutes or so of your work to turn that looseness into something very structured and uh, I love that I love the energy you have in your work and I feel like I'm, I'm doing something I'm doing it the other way around starting off super structured and then I'm trying to add in those kind of you know sporadic elements to create the effect of a painterly feel um, whereas you start with that so my, my question is what kinds of um, like what kind of advice can you give me because I really struggle with starting off that loose and being able to add structure afterwards. Um, have you ever had that problem, or what kind of thoughts do you have on that? So that's my question. Any insights you have on that would be very uh, helpful. That was Chance McGee. Chance McGee, yeah. Uh, but I, I didn't understand the, the last part of the question. If you have what kind of problem? Problem with what? Um, if you have a problem with, um, I guess, I guess his biggest problem was like starting off loose and then bringing it together. He tends to make it really clean and then be loose yeah, with the uh, weight. That part I got. Uh, well, that's that's a, a two-part uh, answer. Uh, firstly, this is me in, on the inside, very not spontaneous but agitated. Okay, so if you see yeah. that rhythm, I see the smile. That's, that's me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's your camera. <laughs> Uh, I'm agitated, right? But secondly, and most importantly, I like uh, I like uh, giving myself the opportunity to work so with something new. Uh, even though uh, when you're working from commission for commissions a lot, you tend to create patterns of movement, right? But you don't get too much surprise, uh, too, ma too many surpri surprises uh, from your work, and this can get tedious and boring, and it can extinguish the flame, right? So when I try to work loosely, it's because I hope uh, meetings between colors and uh, brushes are going to be so spontaneous, they're going to create something new from that work for me, right? And they do. And especially when I add that uh, layer with the colors that I have drawn uh, on a different, uh, an art rage, right? Another uh, graphic program. Uh, art rage, it's going to create some crazy brush strokes, and I add those to my uh, already loose uh, dr uh, drawing, and that's going to create new meetings. And with, with those two situations, I try to see where logic can come in, and then I uh, uh, put the finishing touches and I, uh, I go for the sculptural planes that I, uh, I see in anatomy, but uh, I, I uh, always, I, even when I was painting uh, on canvas, I used to wipe my uh, cloth from the other day on the canvas to create some, uh, some uh, accidents, and uh, I, I used those. Uh, but on, I, I really want to get surprises and see if I can see logic and if I see some beauty in some accidents and some mm -hmm. things. Uh, mm -hmm. This is my challenge, to create the spontaneous brushes that are going to meet uh, beyond uh, what I know where the sculptural plane is. And mm -hmm. if they meet nicely, I'm going to protect those uh, happy and uh, creative meetings uh, next to my uh, knowledge of anatomy and planes. Uh, wow. You're not control he's not like controlling all the process. Maybe this is uh, a good advice for chance, you know, mm -hmm. not controlling... Everything. Yeah, but that comes from the inside. This yeah. is what I was always saying. Yeah. Uh, my, uh, <laughs> you know, one of the main thoughts that every artist has is how do I find my own personal style? And uh, with me, I don't know if it's going to happen the same with everybody. With me, it was just finding one brush that created those accidents in the beginning. And I stayed with that brush until I crystallized something that looked like a style. Uh, but because that brush came and created some sculptural planes that I really liked. One brush, digital brush, I'm, 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 I'm mentioning. Uh, that was enough to create something that looked like a style. And then it, it's all, it was all about uh, crystallizing that. Uh, but that was an accident. And I, I'm pretty sure a lot of artists have the same uh, story to tell that's going to happen to you. Right. So if you're not a, a spontaneous, crazy person inside, it's hard to say I want to be spontaneous because I want to be a Chinese who does realistic work, uh, working from nothing but just the eye and then uh, expanding from that and then be able to create the perfect shade for right from the beginning. And we, we all want what we don't have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, human nature. So Chance is doing an amazing work. It's full of life and joy and positivity. So you stay there because you're good, my brother. <laughs>
you don't follow what I have because it's it, unsettling. It's it's not peaceful, really. <laughs> it's a conflict. Uh, it's a it's a love hate relationship with me and art because I like accidents, but they are tiring to to calm down by the end of the work. You know, it's it's hard work to to focus to find peace in that. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. I'm just going to Chance's work right now. But that's actually a really good point about, um, you know, it, it has to do, I think, with self-honesty and really getting to know yourself. And sometimes you can look at your artwork for evidence of that, but you some people might need to find that in other ways. Like I, I have kind of like a... a I'm very avid reading about spirituality and, and philosophy and stuff. And I have other That's things right. that I do to try to like find who I am and like be honest with myself about who I am. And also not just the parts that I like, but the parts that I don't like. Um, and, and like, so, I, and I can see that in artists, especially master artists, you know, like for example, like Manny, for example, has got a really crazy exaggerated style. Uh, I don't know, you know, you know, Manny, um, <laughs> But uh, I found out after I met him that he also likes to jump off of bridges into water and like yeah, yeah, yeah. do these crazy like a adrenaline things. And it's like, oh, well, that makes sense why his art's so crazy. And he makes such big leaps with his art, you know, because he does that in life, too. So yeah, I know the connection obviously, yeah. between and your personal growth and yeah. whatever happens to Let him finish, go from your hand. Interrupted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And actually, you know, I know Chance personally. He's a good friend of mine. He's actually just started supporting me on Patreon. So thank you for that, Chance. And um, he his work is so already so good, you know, like I, I can. And it's funny because when I talk to him um, uh, and, and knowing like his personality and the way his mind works, uh, it, it reflects in his art. You know, he's very careful and calculated and thoughtful and uh, uh -huh. and he doesn't just accept information he 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 has a waiting room for the information that comes <laughs> in and then he examines it yeah. before he lets it in you know he so, also uh, an avid uh, searcher of the inside of a human being he's also very spiritual so that re reflects into the positiveness and the cleanness and the respectfulness of the, the work that we see with him yeah it would be hard to critique it because it's already like, you know, it's I don't clean. know. It's clean. This is the word I'm looking for. Papadopoulos? What's his what's name? Kostis? Kostis. Papadopoulos. It would guy, be, I mean, too. it might be maybe, I don't know if he wants my critique on it, but it might be good for a chance to like have a, have a time where he does try to do it a different way. Like, uh, like, for example, your method, and just to see how that feels, and maybe that would give him a better knowledge of, like, whether he, if that actually, like, resonates with him or not, because yeah. then he might be able to actually let that go. If he tries it and realizes it doesn't feel good, he might be able to accept his actual style a little bit more. Immediately after caricature six, uh, uh, Euro caricature, uh, the sixth edition, uh, burnt, uh, orange burnt tried this experiment and every artist uh, drew in uh, in uh, in the style of the artist present at the Eurocature. so yeah if you if you're willing to risk being sh ashamed <laughs> by not <laughs> succeeding something because i'm not willing this is this is a problem right but this is my problem but i've seen people trying to work in somebody else's style and it's always good you you can add something that you didn't have when treating the ear or the eyes in a certain way or uh, spreading the colors in a certain manner or starting with the nose instead of the eyes is going to help you with the, the interpretation the formation you know doing it in somebody else's style or uh, drawing material like a blue pencil or acrylics or digital you know if you do that and if you're willing to do that you're not gonna uh, you're gonna grow you know not gonna stop and this yeah. is always good but yeah this is uh, this is personal choice and you're willing to go beyond your comfort zone. Yeah. I want to give you a new word because I've noticed you used the word a couple of times when we talk about exaggeration. So I want to give you the word exaggeration and encourage you to use exaggeration because, and I'm only saying that because um, when I learned caricatures from Tom Richmond's book, The the Mad Art of Caricature, he has a whole chapter in there. Well, not a chapter, but he has a whole section in there of like the difference between deformation and exaggeration. Mm -hmm. Um so 
and I also teach that in my workshops and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah deformation uh, makes it not look like the person. Exaggeration makes it look more like the person. Exactly, bravo. Because uh, I, I just received a couple of days the the question, why don't you create an app that's gonna do the work for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> first of all, the artificial intelligence necessary for that kind of app is gonna be crazy because uh, that's gonna have, have to understand what a human understands in terms of com a comparison of yeah. the basic face with the, the new face that you have in front of you and then exaggerate what you saw characteristic in that person, not just squeeze and push and uh, de deform randomly you know because that's going to look funny but it's not going to like the person it has to have a human filter um, um, of course we'll create that app at some point um, i fear the day but it's going to be there because our artificial intelligence is here so it's going to do it it's, even at the tv show uh, one of the lions one of the investors uh, uh, the was, investors asked us if uh, caricature is important and caricature artists are important if we have artificial intelligence snapchat you know, or next, other apps next door uh, yeah. And uh, we were like, yeah, but where is the artistic value? Because this is a good point. Uh, you can have, you know, like Bali said, even though I didn't meet a Chinese guy, you know, drawing to <laughs> make an opinion. But you, we have the Chinese, like an example of execution and good drawing and good anatomy and everything. But they don't have the artistic value and the artistic value comes. We, not all of them. Not all of them. <laughs> the Chinese mafia come in. <laughs> <laughs> the mob. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, no. uh, but uh, on me, if you baby. concentrate on, uh, you know, uh, bringing your spiritual, you know, uh, forth. Yeah. yeah, forth, and uh, you can have an artistic value. But an artificial intelligence will never have this dimension you know <laughs> yeah you actually an artistic value you got you're, you're ringing a lot of bells right now and i wish we had more time to talk about this topic but there is one thing i want to say about the ai and um caricatures uh yeah. well well there's two things the first thing is that the the when we're working on an ipad like that's recording every brush stroke so you can be sure that that's going to be all that information yeah. that fed into an ai <laughs> And then the other yeah. thing that um, I wanted to mention was with, I had an epiphany, like, I guess about six months ago, maybe a year ago, about, like, why I have such a difficult time working from photographs as opposed to, like, when the person is sitting in front of me. And I think the way I understand it or the way I explain it is, is that when you have a photograph, you have a two-dimensional image that you're putting on a two-dimensional page. But when you have a person, you have a four-dimensional being or more, more dimensions than we even know, but at least four, and you're putting that on paper. So when you, when you hand someone a photograph, what you're removing is you're, you're, you're removing their three-dimensionality, and you're also removing time, which is where the person's personality lives. So you're removing the two most important pieces of information that, go, that make a caricature what it really is. Yeah. You're okay with working life. You're very okay, right? Because you're easy. Uh, you spoke. You speak with ease. So, but you also very open up. Uh, yeah. But it's it's about art. From it's from artist to artist. I'm pretty sure the idea of working better from photos uh, as opposed to working life on the street. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, we have colleagues and friends who are working so so well. Uh, while drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette and then drawing and laughing with the person and creating that experience and that type of uh, experience, you know, where you almost become a friend with that guy. And they, they, even though you squeeze and you <laughs> exaggerate too much at some point, they're still going to laugh. They're still going to like the experience, you know. Uh, with me, I feel so comfortable behind uh, a screen, you know, it's it's but, uh, it's personal. But it's... my personal mm -hmm. opinion is that he's a better artist when he's working live because people are receiving his energy and uh, he's very charismatic yeah. and but he's he just has this fear of being rejected live, you know, <laughs> even though this didn't yeah. happen. <laughs> but it's insane. Yeah. In so it's many fair. years, uh, uh, he has received so okay. many compliments, you know, during live gigs. Yeah, live but, gigs, that's another subject for another day. Live he, gigs, you know. He's 
he's very good at live games. He's I don't know why. He's not just, comfortable. Yeah, probably this fear. But uh, we are here to you know cross. Work, work on. <laughs> yeah, to work on. Them. Well, I have a lot more stuff to talk to you guys about, so we should definitely do this again. Um, before, before we end, though, um, do you? I know that you're. I noticed like you have the caricatures, and then you have some yeah. charitable thing. Do you want to talk about anything? Do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, about the, the company you or whatever the idea. No. <laughs> oh. For now, uh, we are just trying to to figure out the, that model that we talked about, and um, if I if I manage to work with Bali, oh, <laughs> after yeah. all these years, that's gonna be a good years, school for you, baby. <laughs> that's the school of life <laughs> for me. Uh, then I can have the proper, you know, feeling for other artists. I mean, if we were to think of caricatures like uh, an agency with artists and, you know, having artists in all these hotels and, I don't know, in markets, in cities or something, mm -hmm. I would like to work with them personally, not just send them, you know. Mm -hmm. we, I would love to have a team and if this is not possible, then I would rather keep it small for a while until I have the feeling that uh, we are surrounded by others who share our vision and uh, yeah. positivity. Ruxi's vision is uh, please go inside yourself and find out find out why would you like doing caricatures because right now it's a love hate situation even though I'm it's it it comes easy to me to to draw I draw fast and I uh, I draw with ease of course as I said I found out this style that doesn't require too much focus. It's a it's a clean, <laughs> cookie cutting <laughs> style, but I'm gonna go with it for a while until I uh, I feel like I'm in my studios and I can uh, exaggerate and I can interpret and find. Uh, yeah. And being uh, honest with himself because this is his main issue. Not being honest. He would uh, when he has someone whom he you know at live gigs and there is this person with a physical. Problem. <laughs> ah, physical difficulty. He uh, will yeah. try to make them quit, mm. you know, to uh, manage. So I don't go for the obvious. Yeah, yeah it's it's yeah, or, it's bad. Or like you did with the older, guy. You know? An older person who has wrinkles or something, yeah. he will he, ignore you know, some of ignore them. Yeah. some of the. And I was like, no, no, put the yeah. go there. on because <laughs> you know it's the uh, likeness. But uh, yeah, <laughs> this lack of honesty is gonna eat me if I don't do. Yeah. If, if I don't go to it pretty soon, yeah. you know. Yeah, you yeah. You can't lie to yourself. You can't give up wrinkles. You can't give up uh, yeah. a, a, a deformity or something just because you you fear of rejection, you know? Because yeah. you're gonna feel like you're giving up. You feel like you're. Uh, uh, you're not being true, so it's gonna eat yeah. you alive. Yeah. Pro on the inside, it's gonna yeah. come uh, as a surprise one day. You know, you're gonna give up caricatures just because you don't, you, don't, you couldn't go for it when it, when it was yeah. a time. You know, so crack the yeah. issue. Honesty, honesty, and find out yeah. by yourself for yourself why you this like is, caricature. This is his call for uh, to adventure. <laughs> being well, honest. I, yeah, being yeah. Art. I actually uh, I used to do this thing. I called it maybe it would work. Or maybe it will work Monday. So I went out to the I went out to the square, and then like my first customer, I would say, "Hey, uh, I'll draw you for free. Just come and sit down." And then when they sat down, I say, "Well, I do this thing on Mondays where I just try to like really crazy stuff, you know. And like it might just be totally. It might not work. It might work. I'm just warning you. And it's a free drawing, so it's like okay, whatever. So I get you to can do whatever. With yeah. It. Yeah. And another thing too, also about like the deformities or about like some kind of, uh, you know, like I've had like, um, you know, mental, uh, men mentally handicapped people or whatever, like some kind of Down syndrome or or whatever. And my uh, philosophy on that is like that person not only knows about that condition, but they are reminded of that every day. Like and they. And to not show that is actually an insult to yeah. their dignity. Yeah. It's because, so ugly that I want—I don't want to draw it because I'm gonna—I'm sure it's gonna offend you, you know. So yeah, it's they, like that. They right? deserve an honest um, interpretation. 
Yeah, because they know honesty they, they live is with it. something that we all have to yeah. work with. Honestly, finding that honesty, dipping into that, working with that for for you and for 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 the person in front of you. Because actually, caricature should have been uh, the island of honesty. You know. Yeah. The but because you hear, oh, please don't make this double chin. Please don't, don't make my wrinkles. If you hear that, prettier, if you hear that long enough, you're gonna. If you're like me, you're gonna change your style. But that's not good. That's not good. Yeah. It's never yeah. recommended. So, we have stuff. So yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you have to uh, combine studio work with uh, commissions because if you don't do the co combination and you only do one of them, you're gonna ruin something. You know. If you're yeah. doing only studio work and you're thinking the world should accept and eat whatever I have to give to the world, but how about offering yourself with your skills to the world? And maybe sometimes in a tamed manner, but still, you still give some honesty and some cleanness from you, you know. But uh, working for the world and but bringing that studio outside, it's it's good. But right now, it's all about commercial with me. <laughs> but yeah, we're working on changing that. We are working on that. Yeah. So thank you guys for what you're doing there, and thank you for sharing your uh, inspiration and your business model and all that. You guys are uh, <laughs> the model. It's yes. not really a business right now. It's only the beginning of something, but we are. It's an yeah. Maybe next time we'll have uh, we'll have it more crystallized, and we'll be able to share something that's going to yeah. be really useful, really applyable at that instant. You know. It's yeah. And I hope we can see each other soon. Yeah, uh, well, are you uh, going to know what it is? I know, I know Bernd uh, told us something about November, but uh, yeah. I don't know, it, it's still uh, it's on. available, you know. It's we, on. Have our, we have our hotel booked already. We're definitely going. Yay. Yay. That's great. Maybe we can plan a trip uh, to, to Eurocoacher this year and at, at least see each other. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we miss you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we miss you we too. We miss your company. Yeah. So I send send you guys my love and thanks for your time, and um, we'll talk again soon. And keep yeah. doing doing great work. It's great to talk to you. Yeah, well, it's the same for us. It was a nice conversation. Uh, I, I it was something completely different from what we are doing every day. You know, nice. every day thank I'm you shoveling. Thank, thank you, thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, so have fun taming taming that lion. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Have a good day. Bye.